Hey guys and welcome to the first video on our official Strikers YouTube channel. I'm OneStone and one of the admins as well as the dev of the project. Today I will show you how to develop a mint site on the Solana blockchain using Candy Machine with presets and whitelist functionality and how to handle giveaways within the environment. I think it's a good idea to give you a short introduction on our site and our project Strikers. Stractus is a collection of 1000 NFTs also on the Solana blockchain. Our artworks are based on the chaos theory and represents strange attractors, which is why the project is called Stractus. As you can see, our site is full of animation, information and nice designs representing our artworks. In this video, I won't explain how to develop the actual design, but I will show how to build the foundation of your site to start design and from then on the internet is full of explanations. But keep in mind, if you are interested in our project, to have a look on our site and join our Discord community. At this point, maybe a little disclaimer. It may be, especially for viewers who find this video in one to two months, that there are already easier and smoother ways to solve problems. So always check the functionality of the repositories below the video in parallel. So I would say, let's get started. To pick people up who have not coded so often, I would like to show you how to bring your environment to the required level. For this, you have to install a lot of software. All the following links can be found in the description section. First of all, you need any kind of IDE. I personally prefer Visual Studio Code for most things, so it's best for you to install that to follow my steps correctly. Next important tool is Git. We need it to pull projects and you should use it as a version management in your later development too. You can also download Git from the official website. Then two more tools we need are Node.js with npm as package manager and the Heroku CLI which we need later to host the whitelist logic SRP. You could also use other products than Heroku but me as well as the developer of the whitelist RP preferred before other tools because I think it's free and it does everything we need in an easy way. So. Perfect for us. Now we have to install four more things, but this is not just about any website, rather about the console, in my case the Windows command line. But as before, you can still find the links with the references to the commands in the description. First tool we need is yarn. Even though we already have npm as package manager, the repository uses yarn, so we need to install that too. To do this, we simply use the following command from the official installation guide. Next, we need to install the Solana CLI. There's a simple command for this as well, which you can copy from the official documentation into your command line. Afterwards, we can check the functionality with this command and if it works, we are good to go. Now we should create a folder at the appropriate place. I create a folder in my user folder named NFT project and open CMD in this folder. We need this because we now pull the Metaplex repository. Metaplex in general is the basis of the candy machine and simplifies all blockchain activities we have to do in the future. To install it, we just copy the standard git clone command from the documentation and that's it. The way we call Metaplex is a little bit unhandy, but through our development we had many problems regarding the short form, so we will use this command to verify the installation. In this process, we should also install TypeScript, because that is the language the repository and the candy machine uses. Once we have all this installed, we should install Phantom Wallet as a Chrome extension too, because it's way more handy than doing everything from command line. And now? Our environment is ready to start with the actual development. The first thing we'll take care of is the candy machine. You can see the original candy machine repo here, the so-called Exiled Apes candy machine. This can be used as a base if you want to implement the whitelist logic yourself or if you simply don't need a whitelist. For our case, the whitelist repo is better suited because it already includes the needed functionalities. Therefore, we will clone this repository for now and then run yarn install command. This will install all dependencies so that we can use the repository. Now, let's take a look at what we have here. 
First, we have the normal setup of the React app, since Candy Machine is based on React. We see a folder called public, where the compressed and encrypted files for deploying to your server will be later. And we have the SRC folder, where all the coding action happens. In the SRC folder, you will find some documents. First of all, apptsx and appcss. These files are basically the center of the whole thing. They contain the entire UI and other top layer, so to speak. If you want to include design away from the wallet and mint functions, this is the place to do it. Then we have Candy Machine TS, which you basically never have to change. All the logic that is included in there makes the drop run smoothly and works flawlessly from the start. Then we have the home TSX. This one contains the buttons and messages around Solana and NFTs. It also acts as a controller for the whole candy machine and whitelist logic. If you want to add components, I recommend to create a components folder and put the developed pieces into the app TSX. You can find a lot of explanations on the internet for that, so I think you can handle that. The rest of the files are not relevant for you. Perhaps there's one more thing to say about the public folder. If you want to change the icon of your app, which is basically the only thing you should do manual in the public folder, you can do this via the index.html in there. You will also see that there is a standard React icon stored, which you can simply replace according to the same schema. Besides the SRC in the public folder, we have lots of files like gitignore and readme in there, which are basically not relevant for you. The file that is important is the .env.example file. In this, your environment variables will be located later. You have to enter them yourself, but I will show you what exactly goes where. What would be useful at this point is to create two wallets, one as seller and one as buyer. You do this by using the Solana CLI and generate a wallet in your NFT folder with this command. Since we don't want to test on the live network, we can now set the Solana config settings to DevNet just by using this command. Now you have the possibility to add a certain amount of sol to your test wallet. You can achieve this with the command solana airdrop and then the amount which by the way always has a maximum. Currently the maximum is set to 5. Once you have done this, you can copy your private key from this file into your phantom wallet plugin. If you now also put phantom on the devnet, you have prepared your first wallet for a test run. So now, do the same thing a second one for the buyer wallet, so that we can continue. Now, we need to set up the whitelist API. For this purpose, there is also a GitHub repo which is related to the Candy Machine repository. To set this up, we first need a Heroku account, so it's best to press pause now and create one. After that, we use a simple git clone command to clone the API repository. In the whitelist RP folder, we now have files like gitignore and readme. More important is again the .env.example file. You can rename it directly to .env and replace the placeholder at secret key with a password of your choice. Then you have to open Excel and generate a CSV file. This consists of two columns, member and reserve. At member you insert your whitelisted public keys and at reserve you put the number of NFTs they are allowed to mint. When you are done, you save this as a comma separated CSV with the name whitelisted.csv. Now you can start to type several commands. The first is Heroku login and then you type in your login data. Next is git init to initialize your git repository. Then you type in heroku create following the name you want to give your RP. Then you add all the files to the git repository with git add dot. In the next step you commit your code with git commit dash m first commit. And then you create a branch with git branch dash capital M master. To finalize, you push your branch to Heroku with the command git push heroku master.
And then you add your secret key as config to your Heroku setup with Heroku config colon set secret key and then your RB key. To make sure everything worked, just go to the link shown to you in your command line, complete it with slash whitelisted and you should get back a JSON with the whitelisted members. So your RP is now working as desired. With this setup, we actually could already start the whitelist drop. But what we should do now is to make sure that we can do the normal drop afterwards. For this, we as Stractors used a simple workaround. We provided a second home TSX, the one of the standard candy machine repository. You can simply copy this from GitHub. The reason for this is that all the whitelist logic is stored in the home.tsx of the whitelist repository. If we now change the name of the whitelist home TSX to another one and replace it with the standard home TSX, we can release normally without the whitelist logic. Now we prepare the artworks. Maybe in advance, if you drop a collection that consists of layers and not of images that are mathematically generated and completely unique, then you can skip these steps. Metaplex has the functionality to generate your images, including JSON automatically. Please read the Metaplex doco or leave me a comment and I can make a video about it in addition. If you have a similar collection like us, you first need your images in the order in which they should drop later, so probably shuffled, numbered from 0 upwards and as a PNG. In addition, we have to generate the metadata JSON files, which are also incremented in parallel. Let's have a look at the fields in the JSON file. I think name, symbol and description are obvious. Selafi basis points is then more interesting. Here you specify how many percent royalties you want to get. The whole thing is broken down into 10,000 units, so 10,000 equals 100%. We decided to go for 5%, so we got 500 points. Image is a placeholder that will be filled automatically and in external URL you could for example insert related links. We have inserted our website. Then there are your attributes. I think how to add them is self-explaining. Collection name stands for the name of the collection and family for the team that publishes it. In our case, both is Stractors because we are Stractors and our first collection is just called Stractors 2. The last item that is interesting for you is Creators. Here you enter the wallet address of the royalty wallet and how many shares it gets from the royalties. In our case, there is only one wallet that gets royalties and that is the community wallet. For my part, I wrote a small Python script for our last test, which simply fills the appropriate fields automatically and generates the JSON files quickly. But I think you can do that on your own. If not, you can ask me in our Discord channel and I can simply send you the Python script. If you have generated everything now, we can come to the steps for the actual drop. So, now to the real action. For a test run, you can basically follow these instructions, but to do the whole thing on the mainnet, you should take another look at the documentation, as the commands there sometimes need a few more parameters. Additionally, keep in mind that if you prepare the official drop, you will always need to have enough solo on your seller wallet. The first thing you do is upload assets using Metaplex. Since we don't use a short form, you have to enter the path to the Metaplex file and then the command upload, followed by the folder of your assets, dash dash key pair and the path to your seller wallet.json. Depending on the number of images, this can take a few minutes or even hours. If the upload should throw errors or crash in the meantime, simply start it again with the same parameters until all the images have been uploaded. Then verify the whole thing with the command verify and the key pair. Now you can generate the candy machine. 
To do this, use the command create candy machine, then the key pair and then the price you want to get for the NFTs. When this is done, you will get back the public key of the candy machine. In addition, a .cache folder with a file called devnet.json will be generated in your repository. Now it's time to sign the NFTs so that you can prove that you are the creator of the project and you make it impossible for fakers to sell fake NFTs of your collection. Therefore, you can use the command with path, sign all and your key pair. We can now use the results to populate our .env file. If not already done, you can rename the example file of the candy machine repository now. Then replace the candy machine config placeholder with the combination that is in the devnet.json file after config. Candy machine ID stands for the candy machine public key and treasury address is the wallet where the money from the sales will end up. In the end, put your secret key in the required field. From our experience, start date can simply be set to a date in the future as Unix daytime, since the start date of the candy machine is essential here. This is exactly what you set with the update function and then the dash d parameter. Once you have done this, you can deploy the whole thing to your server or in this test run, host it on the local host with yarn start. Now, after some seconds, a very simple looking page appears. If you have set the start date in the future, the mint button is still blocked by a countdown, but as soon as the countdown has expired, the wallet listed in the whitelist can mint its reserve. If the reserve is empty, or if the wallet is not on the whitelist, it cannot be minted at all. Normally, this setup is for a live whitelist drop. But have you, for example, made some giveaways, then also in the live drop, this is the moment to handle it. Before you deploy the whitelist site to your server, you should make sure that the seller wallet is in the whitelist and has the reserve it needs to handle your giveaway NFTs. Then, before deploying it to your server, you can host the site at localhost and mint the pictures from the candy machine. But keep in mind, if you do this, the candy machine should be the one which holds the pictures of your complete collection. If we now want to end the whitelist sale, we first set the start date back to the future using the update command, preferably directly at the time of the drop. Then we simply swap the names of the whitelist home and the normal home files, deploy or enter yarn start again and now everyone can mint their NFTs. And that's all the magic. Once you have done these steps, you only need to deal with the topic of design and your mint page is ready. So now we are at the end of this video. I hope I solved all the problems you had and you liked the video. Feel free to give a thumb up or subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, feel free to come to our Discord and have a look at our tech channel or write me directly at Discord. If you are interested in the topics generate layer NFTs or hosting a mint site, let me know in the comments. In general, if you are interested in our project Stractors, please join our community and have a look at our website or our Twitter account. Thank you for watching and see you guys. Oh, <laughs>